You're watching Keystone Science and I'm here with Tanner Tech. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Today we're going to be showing you how to build an RF interference amplifier. So first, Tanner here from Tanner Tech is going to be uh, kind of explaining how it works in a more scientific way, and then I'm going to bring you guys to the circuit building process. All right, so there's lots of electromagnetic waves around us, but we can't really hear all of them. When you turn on your light, it makes a little bit of a sound, but you can't really hear these weird electromagnetic sounds that are coming out of it. Well, in this video, me and Keystone are going to allow you to hear all these different frequencies using a circuit we built. All right, so this is the circuit that we're going to be using for this video. Now, this circuit uses something called an LM386 amplifier. Now, this is a dedicated audio amplifying integrated circuit. And what you can do is pretty much input a voltage between pins 2 and 3, and you can get an amplified voltage on pin 5. Now, this is a solenoid from a washing machine. And this is the most important part of this circuit because it allows us to convert the electromagnetic waves in the air into electric signals that we can amplify for us to hear through a speaker. Now this is basically a very large coil of wire and what that does is when an electromagnetic field is applied to a coil of wire or a singular wire it will cause a current flow and a differing voltage output on these two pins. Now this solenoid is connected between ground and pin 2 and that will induce a voltage on pin 2 and that will be amplified through this capacitor into this speaker. This capacitor here is basically to take out all the DC voltages coming from this op amp so that way the speaker only sees clean AC voltages. This capacitor right here basically sets the gain of the op amp. If it, there's no capacitor right here the gain will be about 20. If there's a 10 microfarad capacitor the gain will be about 100. Now we're using a 4.7 microfarad capacitor right here and that seems to do the trick. As you heard from Tanner the main component that we're going to be using in the circuit is the LM386 chip. If you don't know the pinout you can face the dip facing upwards and in the top left hand corner we start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So that's going to be the pins that we're going to be referring to in this circuit if you're following along. So we can start by taking our LM386 chip and inserting it in the middle of the breadboard. This way each pin is going to be touching its own individual row and not interfering with each other. Now looking at the circuit we need to take a wire going from pin 6 over to the positive rail. We can follow that up by connecting the negative end of a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor to pin 8 and the positive end to pin 1. Now I'm going to connect the positive end of a 220 microfarad capacitor to pin 5 and the negative end down here to an open rail. Now I'm going to take this speaker and although the impedance doesn't really matter too much, this is an 8 ohm speaker if you're curious, and I'm going to take one of the wires and connect it to the open end that we connected the capacitor to, while the other end can be connected up to the negative or ground rail. And now we can take a jumper wire from pin 4 going over to the ground rail as well. Now I'm going to take the solenoid that we talked about earlier and I'm going to solder two wires onto it. You don't need to do this, this is just going to be so it's easier to connect for the breadboard. But when we connect it to the perf board we're going to take these wires off. Now that we have the wire soldered onto the solenoid we can take one end and connect it to pin 2 while the other end can be connected up to the ground rail. Now as for pin 3 we have an option to connect it to the switch or not. You'll hear that it makes a sound difference and so you can decide if you like that or not. But yeah we'll come back to that in a little bit. But as far as the circuit is concerned, that's it. It's really just a very simple circuit. So let's go ahead and connect it up and we can show you guys some waveforms. As you can see here, we do have the circuit all connected up and you can hear the speaker going on. And in fact, if I turn on the light, you can hear that it makes a sound difference. But now I'll show you the pin 3 problem. If we bring it over here, it creates a lot worse of a sound. So the reason that pin 3 makes such an interesting sound when we ground it is that when we ground pin 3, it lets the full scope of the inductor's output be put into the amplifier and amplify it. This speaker and this speaker are so close that they are electromagnetically coupled. And so we're getting a feedback loop between these two things and it's causing that interesting sound. So as Tanner said, the reason why it sounds more intense is because it's letting you hear the full scope and is putting that coupling between them. So if you do want to be able to hear the full scope, what we're going to do and what you could do is to put a switch between pin 3 and the ground rail so that you can turn off and on that coupling that's going on. So now we'll be right back with you guys when we have it all soldered onto one of these perf boards here. Uh, so yeah, see you guys in a second.
And now the project's complete. We did end up connecting pin 3 to ground through this little jumper here. Um, as I'll show you in a second, when we bring the speaker near, you'll hear that feedback loop that we were talking about earlier. So now on the outside, we have this toggle switch to turn it off and on, but then also we have this terminal port. This is so you can connect up, for instance, the speaker to it, or if you wanted to, you can connect up something like a uh, earphone or piezoelectric earphone piece so you can listen to it uh, just basically in your ear, and it'll use up a lot less energy, but as it sits currently, it doesn't even use up that much energy itself. So that's not really too much of a big deal. Uh, let's go ahead and show you guys us using it on some objects. As you can see, this laptop has a lot of hidden noises. You can even hear the hard drive spinning inside there. So here we have the feedback loop to show you guys. As you can see, when the speaker gets closer, we get a lower and lower frequency due to the induced part of it. Now what's kind of interesting is that when we put it directly above it, you can hear that we get nothing. And that's because if you view it as vectors, basically the component here has zero component inducing into here, so therefore it has none. And if we have it perfectly 90 degrees, then it's perfectly orthogonal and therefore 100% of it is induced, or like not actually 100% because there's inefficiencies, but pretty darn close. So yeah, that's the interference there. And it sounds awesome. Yeah, for sure. All right, so that sound that you hear every time he moves the zoom is actually the sound of the motor moving and turning. Well, we can hear that because the motor creates an electromagnetic field as it moves, and we can hear that through the coil on our thing. Okay, now we're going to test it on this microwave oven. So let me turn it on. So here's the inside of its, uh, well I guess it's technically still on, but not powered on state. You can hear the uh, control panel going on. Let's hit like uh, five seconds and hit start. Since the electric guitar works in a similar way of inducing current through a coil, we can hold this uh, sensor down here, then I'll put the microphone next to the speaker, and you can hear that the speaker is inducing the same sound that the guitar is playing. Similarly, this works with any other speaker. If you play a song and you hold this next to the speaker, then this is going to induce that same song so you'd hear it through on this. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. All the links to all the components that we used in this video, if you want to make it yourself, will be linked in the description below so you guys can go check that out. Yeah, be sure to build this. It's so fun to play with. It's definitely worth building. If you guys haven't already, you guys should definitely check out his channel called Tanner Tech. I'll have that linked first thing in the description below. So yeah, be sure to go check him out, give him a subscribe, watch his videos. He makes pretty cool electronic videos and makes them more frequently than I do. So <laughs> if you enjoyed this video and or learned something new, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the thumbs up button below because that's fun. And make sure if you build this project, make sure to let us know because we want to hear how uh, you guys have fun doing electronics too. That's all for this video, so please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. As always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for next time. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how a theremin works and how you can make your very own.